whatever, but I started with, I started with, I believe, $1,500. I bought like 10 bundles, broke them down, flipped it, took that, put it, flipped it, and I was just... Listen, I'm here at the boss's mansion. I am one of the hosts today.
Chosen. I'm with Stoney, the best one, not the little one. You know what it is? And we got the boss matching. We outside, my boy. Big outside. Big outside. Yeah. I could use water too. I could use water. Yeah, tequila and water. Yeah, tequila and water. Tequila and water. The girl next to me pissed me off. She had to let me use the bathroom. I was like, bitch, you know you by the window. She was drinking you know you gotta pee, you gotta stay out in the aisle. That's what I'm saying. Like, like why what was wrong with you? She was yeah. drinking from the time we sat down to the time we got up. I was like, oh, this she is crazy. Uh -uh, no <laughs> it had to be something. The engine on my plane, the nigga told us the pilot said, when we get mid-air, we gonna start the second engine. Why are you oh, telling us that? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. You don't tell me mid air. Tell myself, okay, one engine is having an issue. However, <laughs> when we get up in the air, I'm going to turn the second one on. <laughs> I was texting Stoney. I was like, oh, it's a, long, child, it's a long story. But just know I was in the airport for seven and a half hours trying to get to Miami. I got to Miami at 3.30 a.m. I was at the airport at 4 p.m. So you already know I was livid. Oh my God, it was crazy. So anyway, I know. So you need you. a drink too. Yeah, we need a drink. Yeah, All of us need go. a drink. I'm not a big drinker, but you know it's I'm okay. not. A I'm not a square from Delaware. <laughs> I'm going to fucking turn up with the girlies, like. Oh, and she put the ice cream. Wait, it's not. Maybe you not doing like a little chill. You need to show me this girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you got ice cubes in? That's against the look. That's that? against the law. She looked me out. Not against the law. Not against the law. You're not supposed to drink the liquor yet. Oh, you have to be the boss. The fucking boss. The 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 One of the hosts today, this weekend, we're turning up. You already know Harlem, New York, Queen of Comedy. I got blessed from the from the God, Miss Monique. So listen, we outside. We gonna turn up over the time. My name is You already know what's happening. Wasn't Anybody else to do this? Okay, okay. <laughs> we just go. I 
I got a Shibuya bowl. Like, don't check it off in the box. Don't check it. All right, I'm ready. I need every day gas in the classroom. I be shaking that ass in the classroom. I'm gonna catch that ass in the classroom. I'm Stoney, <laughs> the stylist. My family moved to Jamaica when I was young. Then I ended up in foster care. Long story, I'm not here for some degree. Well, you know the sad parts, but my career started to take off, I say, when I was about 18 ish. Because from 14 to 18, I was doing here, but I was still so focused on everything I had going on in the streets. Like, I was making fast money, doing all type of crazy shit. And when I really took it serious, like, started getting paid. I was about 18, but I was still, you know, in and out getting my uh, fighting, worried about niggas, whatever the fuck I had going on. Then I say, like, at 18 to 21 is when I started to really, like, take it serious. Like, I knew I had the passion, but honestly, I wanted to go to mortuary school. That's how I got into here, because I was like, fuck it, if I'm going to be a mortician, I should know how to do their hair, too. And then when I, I already had the talent, you feel me, I'm from the Caribbean Islands, we all know how to do hair, but... I was like, if I'm gonna do that, let me do hair. You feel me? Go to hair school, get my license. I was 17 when I went to hair school, and then I was just like, you know what? I'm really talented in this shit. Let me take off. And people started paying me. But I was starting off with probably like my friends I was doing for free. I was charging like $40, $40 for install. This is when sewings was out and shit. Like, we didn't have closures and frontals yet. So I would do like a leave out for 40 50 dollars whatever they whatever they got i was taking it like all right you got 30 all right come come to my house i'm in the projects doing here trapping out of my why house. did we not know her back then for 30 dollars <laughs> i could have had a whole <laughs> <soul in. laughs> Bitch, whatever the fuck you right. wanted and whatever you had <laughs> i didn't give a fuck i was in the projects we was it's me my mom got 12 kids and we was in a three bedroom so it was always my brothers and sisters it was a lot of us and you feel me i had to hustle like None of us was really able to make it. A lot of them don't even got their visas and shit. I was the only one in Philly, so I feel like I was the golden child. And I really had to put on for my family. So I got pregnant when I was 21. And that's when I can say I really was on some, like, you got to book me. Like, I got serious. I started working in a shop in the Bronx, and I started really, you know, taking customers. And then I would just post. Like, I would just continuously post, whether it was getting likes or not. And the more I kept posting, the more people kept noticing and then the more people kept booking and when I would post I always had like this type of confidence to me like I would talk my shit and my like I'm a real ass bitch so I'm gonna post like yeah book me ah and everybody fucked with it and the next thing I know people was just fucking with my realness and my rawness and then I started picking up customers picking up customers and then from then I got my own little suite when I was like 24 about three years ago yeah I got my own little suite and then it was just up from there. Then I joined the makeup artist on my team and I started putting girls on. I had a nail tech, a makeup artist, boo, boo, boo. and we just got together and we started taking off. I had my wig company since I was 18 when I got out of hair school. But you feel me, it wasn't really crazy. I would get little, like, if they want to book me in, I got the hair. Feel me, I give it a little 300, whatever, whatever. But I started with, I started with, I believe, $1,500. I bought like 10 bundles, broke them down, flipped it took that put it flipped it and I was just you know everything I knew from the streets cuz I already had the hustle in me I'm like fuck it let me just apply it to some legal shit because I already was fighting two felonies y'all might not know it cuz I seem so sweet but I really I was bad like I was bad I was I feel like I just was in like a like I wanted it so bad that I was ready to just do whatever like, I didn't give a fuck so 
if somebody come to me like, yo, sis, I got to wait. We can make 10 bands. I don't know how we going to go OT. I'm coming. You feel me? But then I started getting caught up. Then I got pregnant. So it's like, I, I can't fuck with that lifestyle no more. Let me really get on my business shit. And from then I got on my business shit and it just took off. So I want to know, like, what, I want all of y'all to speak after stage. And I want to know, like, what's y'all main struggle? Because I went through every single struggle you could think of. So I can help y'all, like, figure out where are you at this, like, stuck point. You get what I'm saying? Because I've been at stuck points. I've been went a month, two months, not one client. I've been posting. I'm not getting no like. like I went through all of that. And I figured out how to maneuver with it. And that's why I mentor and stuff. Because I went through it myself. I didn't take no class. I didn't do none of that. I did it by myself. So now I feel like I'm in a position where I can help other people. You know what I mean? So I'm going to let y'all tell me what y'all really need help with. I have to say something. We're going to get into that. Well, I don't have much to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for those who don't know, listen, like I said, I always claim myself as New York's Queen of Comedy. Some of y'all are familiar with my videos. Y'all might not even know it's me in some of my videos. And I know I have nothing to do with hair and boutiques and lashes and shit like that. I mean, yes, I dabbled in that in terms of the business, but never, never did I ever imagine, like, you know, doing that. But what I do do for businesses is that I do marketing. So I know a lot of people in the industry, music industry, you know, the entertainment in industry as a whole. And so what I would do is I would create marketing packages for different companies. I've done things for Coca-Cola, Hennessy, um, you know, VH1. I've worked with a lot of different big Company. name brands. You know what I'm saying? And what we would do is like, you know, because I know all, most of the influencers on the East Coast, some on the West Coast. And what we would do is we would create marketing plans for companies that could build their business. So that like, you know, when people be like, promo in the store be $10 and blah, 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 blah. Like that's what we did. We created that whole trend. But a more professional and, way. In a more professional way. So I'm here on a business aspect. Meaning like if any one of y'all have a business or are trying to work on a business and the key the key to a successful business marketing. is marketing it's like you posting your content you create you know you get it like you like she said her friends was coming by getting the hair did for, blah, free. Blah, 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 for free and you know there's a there's a there's a mechanism to doing it and so if you want a successful business or anything successful in life period you gotta promote and you gotta market it the right way mm -hmm. so I'm here with Stoney to help you guys figure out if that's something that y'all doing because we don't know yet. I don't know. Everybody basically got a business. From everybody got a big. Oh, everybody got a business. From we entrepreneurs. From <laughs> 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 so what okay. I know, everybody got a business. Everybody got a business, right? So yeah, again, like I said, you guys are like more in the hair care. You know, I, like I said, I don't really know. Most everybody. of them is in the beauty. In it's the beauty most industry. Of my followers is beauty yeah, in the beauty girls, industry. But yeah. Oh, but I mean, it's, it's everybody, you know, because I'm here, and you know what I'm saying, I do comedy. Thank you. But see, but, why I, I felt like you was important because, right. even though you do comedy, you could still take that. Like, me, personally, I started with promo. Like, I was yeah. going to people like her, celebrities, yeah. DM them, oh, can I, blah, 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 blah. Right. So, I would have to go to people like her, you feel me? Yeah. So, her to be here to speak for herself on what they do. Yeah, and so like, to know let y'all know that the backstory, like, the inside of what we do, you know what I mean, to promote businesses or whatever it is because like there is a lot more to just putting your joint on instagram like it's not gonna go viral there's a a way a an mechanism. algorithm to do shit and i'm gonna help you guys like push that even if it's not through me you know what i mean like i have the resources to get you with anybody you know that you want i am the go-to in the industry for influencers like everybody comes to me i get them the bread we get the bread together you know, I'm like the I'm like the manager of the influencers on the East Coast.